So, um, hello. Um, my name is Richard Schall. I work for CED. And uh, I want to just give a presentation on um, the next version, uh, the upcoming version uh, of OS 1.3, what the status is of that. So, but uh, first, uh, a little bit of history. Um, so, uh, what is uh, OES anyway? Um, so, back, back in 2001, 2002, uh, the sign writing systems wanted to create a uh, document format that allows for interoperable, uh, editable uh, office uh, documents to be interchanged. And, yeah, so they uh, related the uh, uh, openoffice.org XML format to the OASIS standard organization. And there a, a, it was uh, a technical committee was, was formed, the TC, that because 
the uh, change tracking in uh, existing OEF was considered a bit uh, inadequate, like new features. Um, and so uh, the SF committee was formed uh, to uh, handle the uh, change tracking. And uh, then uh, three different uh, proposals uh, that uh, had very different approaches was, uh, were discussed in, in this uh, by this committee. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, I think uh, currently uh, uh, there there isn't much uh, work going on there. That's not correct if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, but uh, because uh, nothing so far has been, been uh, actually implemented in a large office suite. So yeah. Um, and uh, also during the uh, early years, there was uh, quite some uh, fluctuation. Uh, people leading, people uh, joining the, the committee, um, and so uh, uh, I, I personally joined in 2013. Uh, and uh, uh, but uh, unfortunately, some uh, experienced people uh, were, were were leaving. Um, so yeah, that caused also a bit of uh, disruption. And then, uh, in the year 2015, uh, the uh, committee asked itself uh, a bit of uh, hard questions about uh, what actually only f one should be, or should not be, or what is in scope. Um, the situation was a bit uh, confusing, um, because, uh, well, the, the committee uses a, a JIRA uh, issue tracker, um, to uh, handle, uh, track all of the work items, everything that needs to be done, uh, has a zero issue. And, um, well, uh, there were just uh, several hundred uh, issues that all, all had a target assigned to them of only a uh, which seemed uh, too much to handle. And uh, previously, the, the, the issue was that uh, the, um, uh, before that time, the committee was very reluctant to uh, close issues without doing anything. So uh, it looked like uh, uh, a lot of these issues were of questionable quality in the first place. And uh, another thing that, that I think uh, we, we, we got around to is to, uh, to, to um, focus uh, not so much on, on uh, dreaming up new um, new features uh, from scratch, but instead uh, look at what uh, implementations such as LibreOffice were already doing, had already implemented, and uh, just standardize the uh, existing practice. Um, and then we started. Uh, for uh, more than a year uh, to just go through all these uh, hundreds of issues and assign the proper target to them. Um, so if an issue was about an obvious uh, defect uh, or bug, then we, we kept the target of, at the 1.3. If it was a new feature that uh, came with an actual implementation, usually the implementation was in LibreOffice, but I think there were a couple of there were, uh, in other applications, uh, yeah, we, we also take it forward if one point three, but uh, if it's a new feature, it's a good idea, but uh, nobody has already uh, implemented it yet, uh, then we just say uh, we assign it uh, only a later target, which is not, um, doesn't need any specific ODF version. So essentially it has a very long priority and we will uh, only uh, look at it when we, when we um, run out of higher priority issues. Um, or, of course, if somebody actually implements it, we can, of course, uh, give a different target at, at that point. Uh, and then there were some issues that were just um, never going to, uh, to happen, uh, um, because, for, some, uh, for example, there might be an impetus mismatch between what is being proposed and what already exists in one aspect, of course. Um, backwards compatibility is also something we, uh, very important for us, or maybe the issues, uh, issue was uh, just uh, very, very vague and uh, not, uh, not asking for anything specific, 
So I, I think we had uh, we had one proposal that was titled to reinvent the spreadsheet, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure what exactly that means. Could you please be more specific than that? Uh, so uh, we 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 those issues then. Um, and of course, if you have hundreds of issues, then we'll, uh, you will have uh, lots of uh, duplicates. So some features were proposed four times or something. We close all the duplicates, of course. And once we are there, yeah. so uh, this is a bit of an uh, overview about the result of this uh, factory adding. So um, we closed around uh, 140 uh, issues, all right. And uh, then there were about 130 left that um, eventually ended up in ODF uh, 1.3 in the draft. Um, then um, another 110 or so um, we initially accepted for ODF 1.3, but eventually uh, we moved them to the next ODF version. So then uh, we are planning to uh, put these in only form by form. And then there are about 40 that um, we have put on the only later target. So yeah, these are the low priority issues. And then once we were finished with this triaging. Uh, we, um, uh, the, the, the TC basically was uh, working on the, um, the issues that have the uh, one point three target, um, uh, writing, uh, so basically discussing the, the issue in the conference halls and uh, refining the proposal in the issue until um, a consensus was reached that the uh, proposal was of uh, high enough quality that it uh, can go into the uh, specification. Um, yeah, and we continued with this uh, for a couple of years until in June uh, last year we um, decided that um, uh, quite a lot of time has passed since only uh, one point two, and we uh, really want to uh, reach something uh, relatively soon. So we, we, uh, we, we had a, a feature freeze at that uh, time. <coughs> and uh, every new feature that, um, that did not yet have a, an accepted proposal uh, would go into uh, the next version, that is 1.4. And yeah, what has happened since the feature freeze is that basically the uh, editors have uh, taken the uh, resolutions of all of the uh, issues in Jira that have been accepted and uh, inserted them, uh, edit them, edited them into the uh, draft uh, specification. And the rest of the committee uh, was then reviewing these draft uh, documents and uh, pointing out uh, any uh, issues. And of course, uh, new issues were also found during that time. Um, like when you use something, you notice that it's just uh, here's the typo there, whatever. And uh, so this uh, also took some time. And yeah, so uh, what uh, what are all these uh, issues that actually made it into only one point three? So uh, firstly, uh, there were twenty six uh, new features. That uh, those are uh, actual um, new uh, uh, XML elements and attributes that um, uh, enable you to uh, represent something in the document that was not possible to represent before. Um, then there are uh, about a dozen um, that have the type improvement. This is uh, a bit vague. Uh, some of them uh, are uh, so, sort of minor features where it was. Uh, not necessary to add a new element. Uh, we could enable some additional functionality by changing the um, uh, pros of the specification. And uh, some of them were various miscellaneous uh, things. And the vast majority of the issues, about 90, were uh, just fixes for uh, bugs in the specification. 
maybe the, the, uh, there was a typo, or maybe something was uh, contradicting itself, or uh, uh, maybe um, something was uh, unclear, whatever. Uh, yeah, and then there was uh, one or two tasks, which is uh, yes, uh, to do item tracker. Um, something needs to happen at a certain point in the process. Um, yeah. So, where are we now? We are basically very close to the end. So, two weeks ago, the uh, committee approved the uh, uh, committee specification draft one. Um, and the uh, next steps then are that the um, draft is uh, going to be submitted uh, for a public review. And uh, this has about two weeks of lead time. And uh, then the public review itself will be 30 days. Uh, I believe it should start uh, on Friday, if I can talk correctly. And then the general public uh, is invited to uh, send any uh, comments they have on the draft to the uh, comment uh, list at Oasis. Uh, uh, that's a mailing list. And, um, yeah, then uh, it depends on uh, um, what comments are received during the public review. The, the committee has to, read, uh, to uh, acknowledge all of these comments and uh, probably revise the specification. And uh, um, either um, the revision will contain only editorial changes, like uh, fixing uh, typos or whatever. Uh, or there will be uh, material changes to the uh, specification required and uh, in the latter case an additional public review of the revised draft is necessary that will last 15 days and once we are at the point when no more material changes are required um, the, uh, uh, the committee can vote uh, to make the draft a committee specification and uh, at that point, if that is successful, it will be handed over to, to uh, OASIS at large. And uh, it will become a candidate OASIS standard. And uh, there, then another period of public review, review follows. This one uh, lasts for 60 days. And uh, at the end of it, um, there will be a, a vote to, uh, to uh, confirm uh, it as uh, an official OASIS standard. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, how long uh, this is going to take in practice, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, the, the, the earliest I would expect this uh, all to finish is uh, at the end of the year. Um, so. Oh, and of course, I should uh, already uh, also uh, mention uh, this committee I've been talking about this whole time. Who is that actually? Who is doing the work? And uh, I am uh, on this slide. I am listing only the people who are uh, currently uh, voting members in the uh, committee. Because uh, if I would list everybody who had anything to do with ODF one point three, you would not be able to read anything on the slide. So, um, first we have uh, Patrick DeRusso, who is uh, the uh, chair of the committee and also one of the editors of, this, uh, of the uh, draft. And uh, we have uh, Regina Henschel, who is representing the uh, Document Foundation in the uh, committee, and uh, who is um, uh, really uh, amazingly uh, resourceful and uh, spends a lot of uh, time uh, tracking down uh, uh, detailed uh, questions and uh, figuring out um, uh, what, uh, what should be done and uh, she has uh, written a lot of the actual uh, proposals uh, that are going to go uh, into, uh, into uh, ODF community. Um, then uh, I, I'm also on the uh, committee um, and we have uh, Andreas Goethe who is um, um, working on numeric 
uh, which is a uh, spreadsheet uh, application in my editor. Um, and we have um, uh, Andreas, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Alfred and uh, Rich, uh, who are from uh, Microsoft. And uh, then we have uh, Francis Cave, who is the second uh, editor um, for Electronic And he has been paid uh, uh, by the uh, Cotton uh, project. Um, and uh, oh, um, Francis Cave is not uh, a voting member, in contrast to all of the other people on the slides. Um, so, what is COSM? Uh, uh, yeah, this was already mentioned in the previous presentation, so just a quick uh, reminder. So, uh, it, it, it um, came about last year when uh, we, when somebody uh, came to the conclusion that um, uh, just waiting for volunteers to uh, edit uh, the uh, specification is going to take too much time and it's going to, to Release the uh, to delay the release of Audio Foster 3 yet further. So this uh, Cosm project was uh, created uh, at a non-profit organization in the UK. Um, in, um, in initially, it was uh, funded by the Document Foundation and by Microsoft. Uh, and later on, uh, other uh, organizations uh, jumped on board to provide additional funding. And uh, I believe they also take uh, donations. And uh, yeah, um, basically they are funding uh, the uh, ODF editors, so uh, Patrick and uh, Francis Cave, to uh, create um, these uh, draft documents. And so, so much for uh, ODF 4. And uh, as I already said, uh, there are plans on the way for uh, uh, for. The uh, following version, only 1.4. Uh, we already have more than 100 in, in issues in Pure with the target audio connect. And uh, there is also a, a page in the LibreOffice wiki that contains um, um, only extensions that uh, are already implemented in LibreOffice. Um, and uh, most of these already have a Jira uh, issue, but there are a few that do not. Uh, and uh, those will also need to be um, uh, so somebody needs to, uh, to, to create those uh, directions for them and in addition to that uh, we are using uh, and, uh, during the LibreOffice uh, unit tests we are using um, a customized schema that contains all the uh, known uh, extensions that uh, the, our ODF export can write and uh, we have found that there are uh, also um, a few uh, additional ones in there that uh, are neither, uh, uh, neither have a Jira issue at what is this, nor are they listed in the wiki. So uh, if, you, if you look at this the schema file, there are lots of uh, to-do uh, proposal comments in there. So that is uh, also more additional work to do. And it's even possible that there are um, even more uh, audio extensions written, written by LibreOffice that uh, don't even have a unit test for them, which is uh, really concerning practice that needs to stop. And uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, right, and now we are at the end. Um, so, uh, that was some of his work. Uh, any questions? Uh, yes, right. Uh, uh, some some users uh, in Taiwan they were asking me about uh, now if, if we have ODA one point three released and uh, uh, if uh, Office we start to implement that, uh, is it uh, we say about the compatibility issue? Uh, with liberal of current version, can, can it open new ODF 1.3 file format without problem? And now, do we have any uh, clues or, or proofs that we can tell users that if it is uh, no, no interoperability or compatibility issues? Uh, 
so the, the question is basically can a current LibreOffice version uh, open ODF uh, 1.3? Right, because now we have no we have no one who's editor yet, but we also cannot find any pure ODF 1.1 editor now. So I cannot prove anything like okay, you see uh, ODF 1.2 file, but open by pure 1.1 editor without problem. Even some of the company cannot understand. So. Uh, so some users starting to ask me something like that. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, basically, we are uh, we are preparing for that uh, because uh, what we currently do is we write uh, by default, unless you change the configuration, we write uh, only 1.2 extended, yes. which means that all of the new elements are going to go into uh, an extra namespace, the LOX namespace. And uh, when we are going to write uh, only F 1.3, um, these elements and attributes will move to the standard namespace instead of LX. Yeah. Uh, but uh, our uh, import uh, should already be able to read both these elements and attributes in the LX namespace and in the standard namespace. Okay. Um, so I am not. Uh, of course, I'm not sure if that is true for 100% of all of these extended elements and attributes, but that is the general idea. And I hope we are very close to 100%. Uh, so I believe I am 